All right, so I have the first firebox fired up. I guess according to the kiln book, I'm supposed to uh, wait till it gets up to about 500 or so degrees, and then I'll start the other firebox and start stoking. So I got the door all sealed up. Let's see how well that does. And of course, I'll chink up any any uh, leaks as I find them. So uh, I don't know. Here we go. All right, so I'm about an hour in and I have both fireboxes going now. And it was at 600, but it dropped a few degrees. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start alternating the stoking now. Uh, the other side is just starting to catch on top of the, the grate. So I'm gonna work on the coals here and try and get this thing creeping up a little bit. So about an hour in, a little more than an hour and the whole firebox is going pretty good now. And the cone seems to be climbing pretty fast. Check the other side. This is the second one. It's just starting to get going really nice. So I'll um I'll just I'll just stoke whichever side needs it until this one catches up and then I'll start to alternate. But it seems to be climbing pretty well, so I still have some adjusting to do on this kiln. That's the it's actually the inside of the kiln there on that little shelf. So I need to get some high temp blanket and stuff some cracks here and there. A little bit of leakage. Just kind of drip some kiln wash here and there, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. We'll see what happens as this thing uh, continues to go. I'm going to pull out that brick at about, I don't know, 1500 degrees and just to leave it open for the whole thing, but I don't know why. But uh, I'll pull it out in a few minutes see what see what it looks like. I guess once it, the firing gets going, uh, the flame will be coming out of there, and when it sucks back in, that's when it's time to stoke, according to the book. And of course, when um, the smoke sucks back in, it shouldn't be time to stoke. So I guess as long as the temperature continues to climb, you know, um, it should be good, but we'll see what happens. So I'm sitting here chopping some wood up. I think something inside the kiln just broke. 1400. Now everything in there is biscuit fired. So I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a shelf or what it was. And I guess we'll find out when I open it up, but that does not make me feel warm and fuzzy when I hear something like that inside. I think it was a shelf, to tell you the truth. I have some of uh, these shelves here. Um, these are these quarter inch high strength shelves that they make. I don't know what else could have broke, to tell you the truth. I hope it was just a pot. Why it would have, I don't know. Like I said, it's been biscuit fired, so. And we'll keep on going, I guess. There's a spy hole there. That's for the trick brick to open up the flue at the uh, end of the firing. But I can't see anything that's going on in there right now, so. So I'm three and a half hours in and I hit um, 2100, 20, almost 2200 degrees, so. Looks like I'm on track. I'm going to see what happens. It's been a struggle. I kind of stalled out about 1600 for a while, but it jumped up, so I'll, uh, I'll check back. Okay, I'm at the four hour mark and I just hit 2250. So I'm getting really close. A little bit of flame shooting out the chimney. You can see all the leaks in this kiln though. 
Look at that. I think I would have a better, better, you know, easier time firing this if, when I make this completely airtight. But honestly, it's not too bad for being so drafty, I guess you could say. So I think I'll get there. Another 100 degrees, maybe a little soak. We'll see what happens. Okay, I just hit cone 9 here. It's about uh, 4 hours, 3 hours and 12 minutes. 4 hours and 15 minutes into this. So now I'm going to push the trick brick aside. So I have this little tool I made. And we'll open up the flue. There we go. So now that flue should be all open. Let's we'll see what it does to the temperature. I'm assuming it's going to crash a little bit. We'll see what happens. So 50 more degrees and I'll button it up. All right, so just like I thought, the temperature crashed. Went down to 2150 or 2160 or so. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep going until it hits 2300, then I'll uh, button it up. Or 2350, actually. So. All right. All right, so I'm out unloading and I heard a crash when I was firing this and sure enough, something broke. Probably a, uh, I don't know, looks like the shelf just cracked, which is odd. These are these advancer shelves and I did read that they're not recommended for wood firing, but I, I got them for free, so I thought I'd give them a shot. Uh, apparently something happened with one of these shelves, so I'll pull everything out. I'll see what I can salvage and then um, I'll show you what's going on. It looks like right there, nine just started to bend and ten didn't bend. So that tells me, even though my pyrometer said I reached temperature, the kiln didn't uh, reach cone ten. Uh, that's okay because this is kind of a cone nine glaze anyway that I have on these pots. But. Um, yeah, I'll see what happened here. There appears to be a pot that's completely melted. I don't know why that would have happened. It's right in the full area. So let me get this unloaded and everything in the house and uh, we'll see what everything looks like. So as I'm unloading here, I realized I didn't lose anything. Uh, basically because it was such a, a loose stack and half a load. So. I lost a shelf and the shelf touched the top of one of these pots. I still am not sure why that broke. Actually, I did lose one pot down in here. I'm going to pull that out and see what's that, what that's all about. And yeah, that's interesting because that that's a cone 10 clay. And that's pretty melted, so let's see what that's all about. Um, as far as reduction, very little reduction on these upper, on these lower shelves here. But the insides are clean, which is what I was, obviously I wanted that. The insides have, you know, because these are kind of soup bowls. I didn't want anything stuck to the glaze on the inside, so... That's a good spot for that. If I can get those to reduce, I'd be happier, but... All right, let me get this unloaded and we'll go one by one inside. All right, so I get out of that wind and get everything down here on my workbench. Kind of explain what um, what happened in this five hour firing on this Olsen fast fire. So these are the three, four, five, six pots I had on the top shelves. Now, um, this is Simon Leach's Celadon Cone 910 glaze and this is the color it should be when it's 
in a reduction atmosphere, which is obviously what this was in. So, and the clay is has a correct color that it was in a reduction atmosphere. Very, very little ash activity on this, obviously because of the short firing, which I anticipated, obviously. Um, there's another one. The glazes on these came out nice. The color on the clay is nice. No ash glaze. That's okay, though. Um, maybe if I fire this longer, I can get some more build up, change the position in the kilns. So these came out decent. I'm happy with these. Obviously, these are, I just, these were more of a test. These were some stoneware that I had thrown and I biscuit fired them and I, I, I just threw some, some assignments glaze on them. So, and again, I just wanted to test this kiln because I had built it, you know, over a year ago. I just have not had a chance to, to get to it. I had other things going on in my life. So here's a bowl. It was just uh, close to the top or on the top. I forget. This actually came out pretty nice. Um, the thing I don't like about wood firings is you get, you, you know, you can get chunks of stuff at the bottom of, you know, where that you're going to use that's going to be functional. So this one wasn't too bad, and I'll touch on that in another minute. So these are some kind of Raymond noodle soup bowls I had thrown. Sheesh, windy out there today. These were on the on a top shelf that did not have a brick on the sides. Uh, if, you, if you see the kiln and the if you look at the plans for this kiln, um, what you do is the first couple shelves you don't po use posts. You just run brick. Um, you know the whole length. And then acts as the bag wall and the firing where the, where the fireboxes come up. So these were above that. So they obviously have some more reduction, you know, more ash activity inside, which is fine. So these are reduced, decent. That was in a good spot there. That's just the beginnings of, you know, ash activity. So I must have had that right like um, on the edge of the firebox. So that shelf that cracked, that was actually not sitting on posts. That was, the shelf was sitting on, like I said, the, the brick that acts as the bag wall. So it fell on this, if you can see this here, this is jagged. So the shelf was leaning on that. It fell on this one as well. And this pot, I remember putting this right on the, bag right where the, the flame comes up on the bag wall and what this pot did is it slid down and touched the side of the kiln right here this is soft fire brick and it's just sat there uh, before that what was supposed to be in front of that was this now that's interesting because this fell down and was right in the path of the flame that is one of these bowls here or what's left of it this that's odd but obviously that's what happens I guess when something would have fall directly in line of the um, the flame all right so as for these other bowls these little soup bowls I made notice there's no reduction on these and this Simon Leach selling in glaze recipe gets this ugly army green color in a in a you know a non-reduction atmosphere. So that's what happened. These uh, these pots here, all these light green ones, were on the shelf that <clears throat> wasn't sitting on posts. It was. <clears throat> had the bricks for the bag wall so 